Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for coming to check out this video. If it's your first time here, please go ahead and like and subscribe so you get notifications when I put out new content. If you're coming back, thanks. So what we're going to look at in this video is how you can add conditional content to real-time marketing emails. So this is where we can basically have an email, look at it, and actually there's several possible variations in terms of what someone could receive and how we can do that without code. Because it's something that you've been able to do before in outbound marketing emails, but you had to put little code blocks and you had to know how to do it and ugh, it was a mess. So this is so much better. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look, see how you enable it and then how you use it. All right, so the first thing, we are in the settings area of the Dynamics 365 marketing app. And what we need to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom and you have this other settings and we go into the feature switches. Now, this is where we've got uh, new functionality sometimes or functionality that's been there for a while, but we've got different switches that can say we want to turn that functionality on or off. So what we've got in this email editor section is the conditional content and email editor switch and we can see here it's turned on so in your environment if that is turned off make sure you flip that switch you also need to be on I'll, I'll make sure if you don't even see that option you'll need to go ahead and update your environment to make sure that you're on the latest version if you're not sure how to do that go back through look through my videos there's one that talks about how to update the marketing app all right, so once you've flipped that switch, you just go ahead and press the save button and that's it. Then you can start using the conditional content. All right, so we're going to go into the real-time marketing area because this is where the conditional content functionality is used. It's not in outbound marketing. So we're going to go in and we'll just do a new email. I'm just going to do a, a couple of simple examples. So I'm just going to pick one of the standard templates. We'll go ahead, select that as our starting point. Now, with the, um, uh, the conditional content, we've got two ways in which we can do it. The first one is on an image. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this image. And rather than that image from the template, I'm going to go ahead and I will replace it. And I've got two images. So I'm basically going to do scenario A or image A. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, well, actually, in this specific uh, condition, when it's met, we want to show a different image. Now that we've got our image here, we've got the usual sort of properties area. But if we look, we've got some new buttons. One of them, if I hover over there, we can see it says enable conditional content. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Immediately it puts this pink section or border around the image. And what it also does is, it's okay, well, here's the properties for the image. But now we've got this variations tab. This is the default image that will be shown when someone receives the email. But maybe we want to show a different image when a specific condition is met. So I'm going to say new condition, and I'm going to say this is a gold supporter, whatever that might be in your scenario. And I then I'm saying, well, what conditions must be met? I've got the ability to make a condition on an attribute also on segment membership where you can say is in a segment or is not in a segment so that can be useful as well if I go with an attribute it's actually not just attributes from a contact or the account that the contacts linked to that kind of thing it's also potentially an attribute that has been passed through from a trigger so we can see all of our triggers here I could go ahead and pick one of those to use as the attribute what I'm going to do is if I just go ahead and search for supporter, I'm going to say it's actually the support tier. And then it says, okay, well, what type of condition are we saying? Equals, does not equal, contains, and so on. I'm going to do equals. And this is now giving me the values from that field, the support tier field, which is an, uh, a choice field or an option set. And I'm going to go ahead and pick gold. And I'm going to save that. So now we've got the default um, image that would be used and then we also have a different image that would potentially be used if the condition of someone being a gold um, supporter they would see an image now at the minute the image is the same because it's taken the default and it's just copied it and said oh, okay well here's the image so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and once I've clicked on it now when I make changes and click on the properties 
I'm going to replace that and I'm going to put a different image. I'm going to go with that one instead. Now, if I go back to the variations and I click between the two, we can see that I've got a different image that's going to blah, 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 hang on, a different image that's going to be displayed depending on which variation I click on. So that's on the image. If I go and actually let's add in a whole new section um, and then let's go ahead and add in a text, um, a default text here, and then let's also in there add in an image and then we could add in a button. Okay, so image will go with uh, this one and button will just change click here. Okay, so these ones individually, yes, I've still got that conditional content on the image, but I don't have it on the button and I don't have it on the text. But even better, what I can now do is that section, because I've put those three components in that section, I can actually group those together and put conditional content on the section. So if I click on the column, I can then easily get to the section because previously you've had to kind of like click and then click and try and get to the section. This is easy. I can just select and say, let's access the section. Now we've got conditional content button for the section. So I've clicked on that. So again, I get this variations tab and this is my default. I'm going to go ahead and add a condition again. I can pick the condition that I've already set up or I can do a new one. I'm going to go with gold supporter. So now if I click on gold supporter, let's say that I don't want the image anymore for, for that. I'm going to remove that and I might change this to say um, sign up now. So the text is different. Um, and then I might say um, in here, gold supporter text, just so we can see the difference. So now if I go back to the section and I click on the variance and I click on default, there's the original stuff that I put in and now the gold supporter, there's the reduced version or the changed version that I made. So two areas, we've got um, the conditional content on the image and also on a section. Now, if I go into preview and test it and I click on edit sample data, along with whatever variables you put in or personalization, we get that, we also have conditional content. Now, here's where it can be a little bit confusing because I've actually put two sections with conditional content. In theory, I could have an email with one section and just put everything in there and have my conditional content on that. Or I could do like I did where I have a, um, an area at the top and then an area further down. But what that's going to do is it's going to say, well, you could actually, in theory, have multiple combinations. So I've got default default. So that means that um, the default condition is met. Therefore, it shows this default image and this default section here. I've got default gold supporter, which means I'm going to show uh, some different information. Gold supporter default and gold supporter gold supporter. So depending on how you set it up, it could be a little bit confusing. But what we can do is we can rename the variations. So I could just say full gold supporter. Um, I could say, uh, just call this default. I could call this one um, part time gold supporter. I can rename these variations to be whatever I want. And then this one might be silver supporter. So whatever the combination is, I'm, I'm basically giving it a more logical name, if that makes sense. All right, so that's how you would use it. If I want to remove the conditional content, then I can come down here and I can simply click on that button again and it says, okay, well, you're gonna remove it. Everything will be removed apart from the default one. So if I do that, I'm just left with that default image. Okay, so the last thing that I want to show you on this, I'm not going to bother saving this. Um, I am going to go into my journey that I did earlier, and I'm going to click on the email, 
and we can see here that we had um, some emails that were sent and we have some that have opens and clicks. I'm going to go ahead and click on that to look at the delivery and interaction details. This part I think is really awesome because what this is showing me is all of the people that were in the audience that actually got sent an email. But then it says, okay, but which variant were they sent? So I can see that these people got the default and this one got the gold member variant. I can also click on variations and then it gives me an overview and says, okay, well, what's sort of the percentage in terms of the unique opens, unique clicks, how many were delivered that got this variant versus that variant. And then what I can also do is click on the name of the variant and see what they would have been sent. So for me, I think this is awesome because any user would be able to A, set up one of those emails and B, also look at the email, know there's variations and then preview what that variation would look like. I think this is really cool. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something that you can see that you would start using? I'd love to know your feedback. Thanks. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.